Everybody, once again, thanks for clicking on zsportslounge.com and making it your choice, as well as the host of affiliates that keep supporting what we do. We have the opportunity to go out to Texas, get a chance to talk to head football coach Mike Santiago from University of Incarnate Word. Sir, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you all doing there? Hey, doing well, man. It's Friday night, lights, and we'll be heading out to one of the local high school teams and uh, have some fun watching some young football. There you go. Uh, we're missing some high school football tonight because we're traveling. We probably... Uh... Drive by probably about 1,800 high school games on our way to Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, for real, Coach. Your program, I think, if you look at it, has done very well for itself. You know, I'm sure the fans are excited. You get to travel around, and it's I'm sure it's a giant learning step for a lot of these young kids. Yeah, you know, every step we take is a learning step. Uh, you know, the, the first ball game, um, uh, we we got we got off on a right foot there. We got a win against Monterey Tech in a great game. Uh, the next week, we actually got to see the speed of the uh, Division II uh, college game, and we went up to Russellville, Arkansas, and played Arkansas Tech. And then uh, we came back home against the number 24 team in the nation at Western, uh, which is a Lone Star team. We'll be going in. Uh, battled. We, it's like I told everybody, we played one heck of a hockey game for three quarters, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, we, and honestly, we ran, we ran out of body. We ran out of gas. Uh, the guys were... They battled. We were 21-7 in the third there. And then the wheels kind of came off. Our kicking game uh, let us down. We got two punts blocked, and, uh, and it was over. We ended the game at the two-yard line going in and, uh, and couldn't get that score in. But I was really happy with the guys. They, they, they did what we asked them to do. They drank the Kool-Aid. They, they, we told them, you got to battle. You can't let them play harder than you. Uh, they didn't. I said you can't let them play smarter than you. They did. But it's uh, like I said, everything's a learning experience. We're on our second road trip now, heading up to Langston. We're actually uh, at a Golden Corral here in Denton, Texas, uh, just stop at the east. So uh, they, they're getting used to this routine, and we'll get up to the Crown Plaza this afternoon. You know, Coach, You know, I think building the team, you've got a lot of freshmen, a lot of young guys involved in the program. A lot, a lot of them are going to have the advantage of being something special because at the end of three to four years, they are probably not going to be in this same position. They're going to be mentoring the new guys coming into your program. Yeah, you know, I, I think there is a lot of freshmen. That after this year, you know, I, I talked to a buddy of mine, Ronnie Ritterman, who who's, uh, played quarterback for me at Southwest Texas. Uh, he said, you know, I got to tell you, man, this is that you make between year one and year two. Um, you know, we've got to get through year one. We've got uh, seven more ball games on the schedule. Uh, excited about it. But, uh, you know, year two, these guys now are veterans. They're all only sophomores, but they're veterans now. And uh, we'll get to our full complement of 36 scholarships next year. Uh, we're, all, we're playing with 24 right now. And, and so, you know, it, it's all a, it's all, uh, a process. Baby steps. Um, you know, it's like I told somebody the other day. Uh, where do you think this program's at? I think we've reached puberty. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, I, I think that as long as the alumni, the president, yourself, you're moving it may moving the the pendulum in the right direction. The first year is always the most critical and hardest year to deal with. As, having a coach like yourself in the you know in the driver's seat, who's been through a lot of different programs, seen a lot of ups and downs, you can weather the storm. But sometimes these young guys realize when they step into your into your camp practice is tougher but then they go against juggernaut programs that are ranked in the top 25 in the d2 and they're getting smacked around it is a culture shock for those young guys yeah you know it really is and and the, the thing that i liked about it is the kids didn't like it you know it didn't feel good it wasn't okay you know and uh and so you got something to build on there it's uh the, the hardest thing we have to do uh, as a coaching staff is keep these guys together and 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 explain to them, look, we reached this goal this week. Uh, you know, against Midwestern, they hadn't given up a touchdown in their first three ball games. And uh, and when we scored in the third quarter, it was huge. You know, hey, we scored on these guys. Uh, you know, and we had we had the chance at the first score of the game. We threw an interception from the one yard line. And uh, you know, ball got tipped, batted around, they got it. Uh, it was just, but you you gotta set goals and. And the goal isn't always right now. Unfortunately, the goal isn't always win. We're going up to Langston. They're number eight in the nation, NAIA. You know, this week, 
we feel like we got a chance. But the goal is still play better than you did last week. And, and we feel like if we do that, uh, we have a chance to come out with a win this week. Yeah, and one of the areas we like to follow a lot, and we talked about this before, is the O-line. The O-line, I think, has the least amount of uh, movement and the most impact in a game. If they, it, it, They're the ones that are sort of missed off. When the quarterback gets tackled, they get yelled at. When the quarterback scores a touchdown, the quarterback and receiver get patted on the back. But the, that O-line... Is, is the heart and soul of every program. They're usually the smartest guys because they have so much to contend with. On the defense, you can be mean, green, and inaudible and go after everybody. On the offensive line, everything you do is watched, and I think that's probably going to be the biggest growth this season is the offensive line finally develops itself. Yeah, you know, and that's the, that's the one spot on, on the whole team when you really look at it when you're playing with young offensive linemen. Um, you almost feel bad for the guys. <laughs> You know, they, they're mismatch, man. Some of these, some of these young tackles, they're battling their, their tails off against some, you know, junior and senior. You know, last week an All-American defensive end. Uh, you know, then we're having to throw tailbacks in there to try to help them with chip blocks and all that. But um, this group, they're really coming together. We got some young alignment playing well. Uh, you know, we had our first uh, 100-yard rusher last week. Uh, Trent Rios rushed for 123 yards. That's uh, against the number 24 team in the nation. That's a compliment to the offensive line. And, uh, and so, you, again, it's, it's the little goals that you're looking for uh, and, and the, little, the, the, the little successes you have each week. And don't keep building on each other. Absolutely. Coach, thank you. Enjoy the Golden Corral. We're going to give you a call in another couple of weeks to check on the progress. Would that be okay? Look forward to it. Look forward to it. Hopefully we'll have a couple more wins under our belt. <laughs> Absolutely. Coach Mike Santiago from the University of Incarnate Word, brand new D2 program, their first season. We're going to follow them every step of the way on the Twitter box and see if we can't pick up some ESPN news. Coach, you have a good day. Enjoy your dinner. Hey, thanks. You too. We're off the air. Hey, Coach.